Hey everyone, this is Brett Dien here, and today I'm going to show you how to fix a squealing ratchet clutch on a Briggs flathead. Uh, this is usually a pretty common problem, especially if your equipment sits outside for a long time. In this case, um, I did do this two years ago, and now it's squealing again. I usually get my equipment running middle of winter to make sure things still works. I know it's a weird maintenance thing, but um, especially with this whole flathead, it really gives me problems in the spring even if I put fuel stabilizer and fresh fuel and all that in the tank it still gives me a hard time so when I tried to start it on ether of course the ratchet clutch squealed and the uh, mower wasn't even running it was just uh, me rotating it so in case you don't know what the squeal kind of sounds like I'll give you an example here Usually the squeal doesn't happen until the motor is actually running, but in this case it actually got so bad that it actually squeals while trying to pull start it. So this is actually a really relatively easy fix, it's just that it freaks people out because um, it's loud now, but when this thing's spinning at 3600 RPM, it screeches and makes your ears bleed. So um, anyway, we'll get the cover off and go from there. So now that we got the cover off, um, this is the ratchet clutch in question. Now you can get these for $25 Canadian, but considering the fact that you can fix this for probably six bucks, I don't see the point of buying a ratchet clutch unless you happen to be missing parts like the balls or the pawl. But I don't know if you can hear this on camera, but this is, yeah, like it's even making sound for me doing that. It's really stiff. I know it kind of looks... Like I'm making it easy on the camera, but it is really stiff. Um, I don't believe there's any grease in here. I think it's just the fact that the shaft got rusty and it's just squealing against that. But we don't know until we take it apart. And these are very easy to take apart. There's a screw here and there's a screw here. Sometimes there's four and usually what that case is, it just holds down this uh, screen. But most of the time how it, uh, Briggs Strand puts these together is... You got two screws holding the screen and then two screws holding down the clutch plate, which is this plate right here that we're going to pry off. But other than that, you just need to take these two fasteners out and you're good to go. Okay, so we got the two screws out, so I'll just pull out the cover and it doesn't look too bad. And the shaft doesn't look rusty either, but the, oh yeah, the balls are a little tacky, so... Um, the biggest mistake I see with these systems is, is people will put grease on the inside of the ratchet clutch. You're not supposed to do that. You're only supposed to just lube the pawl and the shaft. You do not want to grease this part because if these balls stick, then your ratchet part won't work when you try to pull it over with your pull rope. So um, what we're going to do is take these ball bearings out. Uh, and I'll take you over to the bench and we'll clean them up and then we'll get this thing all spit spat dibbly do. Okay, so we got the ratchet pawl and the ball bearings here. And so basically what we're going to do is, I'm just going to bring you in closer here so you can actually kind of see what I'm doing, get you in focus here, because we're using a DSLR with the manual focus because the motor on the lens is freaking loud as crap. So, what do you need to clean this? Well, you know, you could just use gas or I just like to use brake cleaner because it works and it's cheap and ching chong ping pong. Anyway, so... Um, I guess you could spray it on the balls. You know, no one wants dirty balls. No one wants wet balls either. That's just not good either. Um, I like to spray just a rag. That friggin' fan. It's probably loud too. I don't need it anyway. It's warm in here. And you just want to take each one of them. Get them nice and clean. You can kind of see how dirty they are. It's There you go. Now you're kind of more in focus. Just clean each one of them. I actually do not know what causes this. I think it's the fact that if your seal on the cover is not very good or use a very, very sticky oil, 
it just attracts dirt and then makes these balls on the pole get really dirty and then you get that squealing action because the last time I did this was two years ago and some brig strands that I've worked on I haven't had to do it in almost 10 years so it just kind of depends on what oil you use and how good your seal is already on the cover like uh, the lawnmower in question here is built in 1981 and it was owned since brand new so I don't know it kind of depends as long as you maintain them and you understand that the squealing clutch is nothing better than just it's dirty it's not a big deal and then it's You have a couple of choices. You can use penetrain oil like this uh, CRC screw loose. Let me just get you in focus there, Charlie. There we go. Uh, penetrain oil is good, but it's not really a lubricant. It's more to make sure that stuff doesn't seize, which I guess is kind of the point of this. But what I've learned from a trick from another YouTuber is uh, tranny fluid. It lasts a long time, and especially if you get the synthetic, it doesn't usually ever wear out. I do not know what's the last kind of oil I used when I last did this two years ago, but I've always had great success with ATF. It doesn't have to be synthetic, it's just that I have this because I'm a dealer, so I have lots of this sitting around. But ATF seems to work. Um, every Briggs Strand I've owned that's had problems with the squealing clutch, I've just used ATF and it's fine. So... That's what we're going to use, and I'll teach you um, what you have to all do to get prepped on the motor side. So on the motor side, what we got to do is make sure, there we go, make sure that the clutch assembly is clean and the shaft is clean, and then once we get this clean, we sand the shaft, spray it again with cleaner, and then lube her up. And I know that sounds really gross. So you guys are a bunch of dirty perps. Yeehaw, son of Jim. Okay, now that it's clean, uh, grab yourself some sandpaper. I usually use 120 grit, it's what works for me. And just start. So, now that you got it clean, what you want to do next is grab your fluid of choice. And you don't need a lot, it's like. Less than an eighth of a teaspoon, like, you, I don't even know if that's an actual measurement, I just made that up. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way, so. Because if you have too much, then you're going to run into the, ooh, God, that was a lot. <laughs> See what I mean? I poured out way too much. What I'm going to do is pour it out onto my tip of towel. Yeah, that was quite a lot. Because what happens is if you have too much, when you put this down, the fluid will spray out of the tiny hole at the top. So, yep, like that. Exactly, I called it. So, clean it out. And that is a lot smoother. Okay, now that the cover's on, we can give it a test. Obviously, I'm not going to start it up 
because one, I don't think it will start, and two, I'm in a shed, so. But we can just hold to make sure that it doesn't squeal. It shouldn't. As you can see, it doesn't squeal. That other sound you might be hearing is probably the spring in the rewind starter. That's completely separate. As long as you don't hear squealing while the flywheel is rotating, you fixed your squeaky ratchet clutch. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Please remember to give it a like, comment, and subscribe.